welcome to Hedgehog Hollow and welcome to my guest post with Canvas Corp Designs. I'm super excited to be here and be able to share some home decor items and ideas with you. Today we'll be creating a canvas. I have used some distress inks to create this lovely background. We're going to create a stenciled effect with butterflies. I'm also going to show you how to stamp with foam stamps on canvas to get the best effects and some tips not to get that line just where the wood is underneath. We're also going to create this 3D vellum butterfly that coordinates perfectly and looks like these butterflies are really flying off the page. So let's get started. So today we're going to be using the Canvas Corp uh, Stretch Canvas. This is a medium texture 8x10 size, which is perfect for a small uh, sentiment wall hanging, which is what we're going to be making. This is like an off-white sort of colour, so it's really nice to work with because you don't need to necessarily cover anything. It's not stark white that's going to show up. And this medium texture also gives you a nice lot of to work with. I'm going to be using the Crafters Workshop new Butterfly Trail, oh sorry, a slightly older Butterfly, buff, butterfly Trail, I can't get my words out today, and it works really well because you get this lovely swoop up the canvas. We're going to be starting this bottom corner here, with the, and I'm going to centre out that butterfly, and then we're going to get them all the way flying up to the top. I've got a few different colour of Distress Inks and my favourite barber's brushes that you're going to see me use. I'm going to use Squeeze Lemonade, Mustard Seed, Antique Linen, Dried Marigold, Worn Lipstick, Spun Sugar, Shaded Lilac and Dusty Concord. There's actually eight shades there. I've got a few different ones just to see how we get on and what I want to add. We're going to add it in very light layers. I've also grabbed my range of blending tool just maybe if I need it for the corners or there might be an area that I want to add a little bit more to as well. So let's get blending and you can see how this canvas starts to come together. So I'm going to start off with an all over blend of the Antique Linen Distress Inks. Now Distress Inks blend beautifully on canvas as well as many other mediums but they're one of my favourite things to work with when I'm doing a home decor canvas. I like this Antique Linen, it's really nice and although it's an off white underneath anyway I like to just add a little bit of a wash kind of all over. Um, just really if anything peeks through at the end then it's not just bare canvas, it actually has a little bit of tone underneath that so just kind of takes off any newness or harshness from the canvas as well. I am using a barber's brushes here to blend, they're a little bit like a clarity brush uh, but much less expensive, these are a couple of dollars each, I'll link my particular ones below, they now have a gold handle, they're slightly different, these are super super old but just so nice to work with. So I have a yellows family one, I have a pinks one, I have a blues one, etc, etc. Now I'm using the Squeezed Lemonade Distress Ink and you can see that there's a little bit of a harsh line starting to occur from that wooden frame. So what I did was I went and grabbed some um, thick pieces of cardstock, you can either use packaging or I had these cut down from the backs of scrapbook papers and I'm just slotting them into each of the corners. Once I did that had no issues whatsoever, I just remember to remove them at the end, but um, even if you didn't, I don't think anyone noticed, you can't actually notice from this side that they're there. So what I started to do was then blend out those harsher lines, and by the time I'm finished, I don't think you can even see they're there. I looked at it afterwards when we were photographing it, and I couldn't see them at all. I'm now working with the uh, light pink, and I'm going to work with the light and the dark pinks. So I'm using worn lipstick and sponge sugar. I really want some pinks in there. Uh, Tilly's walls are going to be pink and I want to bring that out when I hang it on her wall as this is for her bedroom. A little mummy made project for her. So I hope she'll be pleased with that. Um, now I'm going to start working through my colours. I'll play a little bit of music and then as we start to add some of the final touches, I'll come back and explain what I'm doing.
So perfect timing there on the stencil. I'm just going to hold the stencil on with my fingers. Uh, it's quite a large expanse. I don't really have anywhere to tape it to, but I didn't find it move too much. Now I'm going to first of all go with the shaded lilac and I'm going to go all over the stencil quite heavy. And in places you'll find me dotting, that gives me heavier coverage. And then brushing, which gives me a slightly lighter coverage. And just holding it there just to the side will work absolutely fine for you, no issues at all. And I want to make sure that that little corner in the, or the big butterfly, I should say, in the bottom right hand corner was perfectly sort of um, symmetrical, I guess, with that corner. So the center of the butterfly was in the center of that corner. So it looks like the butterflies are going all the way up. Now I'm going to take the darker dusty Concord and I'm just going to lightly dust in a few areas with that uh, darker piece. I want that one butterfly off to the side to be quite dark. And then in that bottom butterfly, I want to just kind of catch his center panel and just the tips of their wings. So just to add that little bit of light and dark and depth. So the butterflies really were fluttering along over that canvas. And you can see there how stunning it comes out. I think it's an absolutely beautiful stencil and I love how it works. This canvas was awesome to work with really blended nicely. I'm spritzing some water into my fingers and then just splattering it onto the canvas. That gives me some lights and some darks and you can see there the effects it gives you and I think this real close-up photography shot really shows you also how great that looks. Particularly once I then take some squeezed lemonade and antique linen and I actually brush it into those water droplets and that really kind of accentuates them but again it just adds a bit more interest, a bit more depth and texture to to the um, image as well onto that canvas so when it's on the wall you really want to look go and look at it close up and see all those different things that are on there so I'm going to brush those over and then what I made sure I did was leave this to dry I actually expedited a bit with my ranger heat tool you want to be pretty careful because that does get really hot but uh, you can do that or just leave it to dry for maybe an hour or so so it's thoroughly bone dry I'm now going to use my Tim Holtz Chronicles foam stamps. These ones come on acrylic blocks. The newer ones just are foam stamps that stick to your current cling blocks. And I'm going to use some red rust paste. I'll also include some links in the blog post uh, below the video as well for places I found these original Chronicles ones and also places that you can still get those or the slightly newer ones that are now available too. Now here you can see I'm using a piece of masking tape and I'm using this as a guide. And I'm going to use this as a guide to keep my stamp straight because otherwise I'd be starting a couple of inches down. I'd probably be finishing up somewhere near that top right hand corner. I'm not very good at being straight. So just that little bit of masking tape won't do your canvas any harm, but it will help you get a straighter effect. And I've put some of that red rust into a paper, tray, uh, paper plate that we had left over from Maddie's birthday, hence the emoticons, if you saw my party video. And I'm just going to stamp each letter in. Now I start with the F and the R of flutter, and then I'm going to do the L and the E, then the U and the T, and then the final T. I did pre-line them up so I knew roughly the spacing between them, but I find I get a much uh, better effect if I do them that way. So start your two outer letters, then work your way inwards from there. That would be my top tip there. So I'm just going to lightly dunk this in as though it's acrylic paint. You'll also see me sometimes put my hand underneath just to give it a little bit more firmness because uh, where the wood ends on the canvas where it's been stretched, it's a little bit more springy in the middle. And I did keep the cardboard pieces in there as well for a little bit more of a, a hard back to stamp onto. You also, with these, because they're a distressed look, you do kind of, and you can see my head popping in, as long as you look over it quite carefully, you do get a bit of a second bite of the cherry and you can stamp over the top if you missed areas. It's going to look absolutely fine and if you're pretty careful, you'll find that you uh, don't have any issues double stamping there. So I'm going to work on my flutter on by and then we can add that gorgeous uh, vellum butterfly accent.
So these are the vellum butterflies that I created and for this I used a waffle flower butterfly die. There's two of them that come in and they coordinate with that lovely stamp set there. I've cut out two. We're first of all going to dust them with some of the uh, dusty concord. Grabs my Baber's brush. I just started flicking around the edges to add that in. I'm also going to be quite heavy uh, on one of them with the central piece as well because I want that to really show up and you'll see that in the photographs at the end. I then took my finger into the red rust and just started flickering around. I wanted to get somewhere that it all sort of tied into the rest of the canvas and just by gently adding those accents, a really super light touch. If you saw me do the dragonflies a couple of weeks ago, you'll see it's a very similar technique with the red rust. But a little bit of this goes really, really a long way. This was just a smear of the top piece that I peeled off the red rust and it was absolutely enough to get me through doing all of those letters and also doing these butterflies, but I think they look absolutely superb. So uh, then I decided to put them together as though they are flying. So to do that, I grabbed some glue dots and you can see I just wanted to see which one I wanted on the top, which one I wanted on the bottom because they are slightly different and each one will always be different. So I put a glue dot between them and then I'm gonna use uh, it's a bit more of a heavy duty glue. I wanted to pre-fold them so that I knew where that fold line was gonna be because that's where I want the glue to be so that you don't see it through the vellum. And I wanted to make sure that I had the perfect space there and knew exactly where I wanted to stick them. For glue, I'm actually gonna be using an iCraft uh, mixed media adhesive. It's really strong and it works really well on canvases and things. Now I stick it with my finger and then just to really uh, hold it down with a nice lot of pressure in exactly the right place, I picked up my bone folder to be able to do that as well. So I hope you have enjoyed this project. It was really great fun to make and I can't wait to put it on Tilly's ball. I hope you also enjoy these photographs that you can see. Lots of uh, different ones, of course, they'll be available on the Canvas Court blog. I will also put them on the Hedgehog Hollow blog, so feel free to pin them or save them and feel free to recreate this canvas. I'd love to see what you make. Be sure to link back to Canvas Corp and Hedgehog Hollow and I will see you again very soon for another guest post. Thanks for stopping by. Happy stamping. Bye.